Sweden, a European country known for its stunning landscapes, monarchy, and prosperity. It stands out for being among the most developed and egalitarian societies in the world. It adopts the Nordic model, characterized by a capitalist market economy with state influence in various sectors. It maintains high economic freedom, streamlining, and a robust social welfare system. With a population exceeding 10 million inhabitants, it enjoys a high standard of living, ranking at the top of various social indicators. Despite this apparent stability and equality, Sweden faces challenges affecting its economic and social prosperity. Unemployment has risen, reaching over 7%. Additionally, there is an exponential growth in violence, positioning Sweden as the most violent country in terms of firearm-related assault deaths. These issues contrast with the traditionally positive image of the country, indicating that, despite its success in many areas, there are issues to be addressed. For a long time, Sweden was recognized for maintaining one of the most inclusive and welcoming immigration policies globally, seen as a humanitarian powerhouse valuing receptivity to immigrants as an essential part of its identity. However, this perspective has changed in recent years. Currently, Swedish public opinion is against an increase in immigration, and the government admits that its management of this issue has not been effective, resulting in a drastic change in the country's immigration policies. But what caused this transformation? Why is Sweden changing its approaches? Is it just the immigrants' fault? Well, stay with me in this video, you will understand everything. You already know, right? Grab that popcorn, hit the like button, and let's go! Located on the Scandinavian peninsula, Sweden shares borders with Norway and Finland and has a partial border with Denmark, connected by a bridge over the sea, countries we've covered on this channel before. To understand both the success and challenges faced by Sweden, it's necessary to go back in time, leaving aside its Viking past and focusing on the 19th and 20th centuries. Influenced by Marxist ideas, Sweden faced economic lag, leading many Swedes to migrate, especially to the United States. The country remained neutral during both World Wars and the Cold War. During the Cold War era, in the terminology of the time, countries not aligned with any bloc were called the Third World, regardless of their wealth. In this categorization, which is no longer used today, both Sweden and Switzerland were considered Third World nations. After the end of World War II, Sweden found itself in an advantageous position. By not officially participating in the war, the country was not invaded, its industries remained intact, and Europe needed reconstruction. Sweden, having the products and equipment necessary for this reconstruction, received aid from the Marshall Plan, while the United States and the Soviet Union vied for influence. However, in 1971, the oil crisis impacted Sweden. To address it, the Swedish government increased taxes by about 10%, resulting in a decline in per capita GDP. It seemed that the crisis had passed, but in the 1990s, a real estate bubble burst in the Swedish economy, leading to a 5% drop in per capita GDP and such high inflation that, in 1992, official interest rates reached 500%. To combat these challenges, starting in 1994, the Swedish government implemented spending cuts, reduced welfare programs, and privatized various companies and services. This approach, supported by economists from the Austrian school, proved effective. With Sweden's entry into the European Union and the adoption of the euro as its currency, the country evolved into the development we know today. Subsequently, after achieving this prosperity, high taxes emerged in Sweden. The country once led the list of nations with the highest maximum income tax rate and currently ranks sixth. Despite this, Sweden maintains a prominent position in the Ease of Doing Business Index, ranking in the top 10. In the Economic Freedom Index, it also holds the 10th position, just behind Denmark. Purchasing power in Sweden is high being more than three times that of Brazil and almost twice that of Portugal, according to the World Bank. The country is fifth in the world for the least corruption, according to the Transparency International Index, sharing this position with Singapore. 
In a country with low corruption, issues such as bureaucracy, inefficiencies, and redundant public jobs are less common. Members of parliament do not have parliamentary immunity and receive only 50% more than a teacher. Many even use public transportation, such as buses or bicycles, highlighting the proximity between those who have power and those who do not in Swedish society. This is also supported by sociological indices, such as the Power Distance Index. Thus, in Sweden, the pursuit of equality extends to both prosperity and the minimization of inequality, not surprising for Nordic countries in social and economic indices. Despite this, the country has a negative highlight, which is security. In 2022, there were 391 shootings in Sweden, 62 of which were fatal, while 45 people were shot dead in the previous year, considerable numbers in the European context, though relatively low compared to countries like the United States or some Latin American nations like Mexico or Brazil. The country faces an alarming increase in firearm-related crimes, presenting one of the highest firearm fatality rates in Europe. Additionally, there has been an increase in the number of crimes involving explosions. This year, 134 bomb attacks occurred in Sweden, compared to 90 in the entire year of 2022. These crimes often involve explosives detonated in public spaces, outside of residential buildings and small businesses. There is also an increase in hate crimes against minorities, mainly for racial and religious motivations. These numbers and problems reveal a concerning situation in Sweden, where lack of integration and the emergence of parallel societies are contributing to an increase in crime and violence. But what could explain this wave of violence? Most shootings and explosions in Sweden involve organized criminal gangs. In summary, 8 out of 10 shootings in this Nordic country are linked to these gangs. The most worrying aspect is that 53% of those convicted in Swedish prisons were born abroad. A key component connecting immigration and crime is social exclusion. This is a complex problem with many contributing factors, with poverty being a significant element. In the country, there is an excess of public funds and subsidies. This excess may explain much of the increase in exclusion and crime in the Scandinavian country, at least compared to European standards. In fact, the immigrant population in Sweden receives considerable amounts of public assistance, especially asylum seekers. One particular benefit stands out, child allowance. This non-exclusive benefit for immigrants was established in 1982 when Sweden faced low birth rates. It provides a generous income to families for having children, not just as a baby bonus but as a subsidy that every legal resident in Sweden receives from the month following birth until the child turns 16. Under certain circumstances, this subsidy can be extended until the child reaches 20 years old. So, what does the Swedish state offer to each child? Basically, a subsidy of at least 1,250 Swedish crowns. Since immigration policies often involve larger families, this subsidy is especially advantageous for them. Additionally, there are several other provisions benefiting immigrants, such as rent subsidies for large families and advantages in accessing public housing. All these assistance programs have direct impacts on the labor market. Many people end up relying on these aids for a longer period than initially planned. Employment data also indicate this, and women are the most affected, as many of these subsidies discourage their participation in the labor market and social integration, something that can already be challenging in some cultures. Adding public housing policies, we have a scenario conducive to the formation of ghettos, which is particularly favorable to the development of gangs. In Stockholm, for example, it is estimated that there are about 60 criminal gangs operating in the city. The question is, is there a solution to all this? What are the consequences of these policies, and what exactly does Sweden intend to do now? Since last year, Sweden has been under the leadership of a government that highlights immigration reform as one of its top priorities, implementing significant changes. Now, obtaining asylum as a refugee has become more challenging, 
and stricter measures have been applied against those living illegally in the country. Furthermore, the immigration of less skilled labor has been restricted, while integration, such as learning the language, has become a condition for long-term stays and access to social benefits. Additionally, it is now necessary to prove a minimum income of 1,200 euros per month. Analyzing immigration policies, Sweden has undergone significant transformation in recent years. The country, known for its stance as a humanitarian superpower, seems to have undergone changes that, at least for now, do not appear reversible. Although the law itself is not much different from that of other European countries, the ultimate goal here is to reduce the arrival of immigrants. However, the robust assistance and subsidy system, as well as housing policies to avoid ghettos, apparently remain unchanged, and the government plans to make even more resources available, without considering crucial factors such as employment and entrepreneurship in the foreign population. Considering all this, do you believe that Sweden's true problem is immigration, or is it a result of deficient public policies? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you very much for watching.